hydraulic pump, we need to check it out on that CUV, so we should, we'll have it ready in about 20 minutes, sir. That's good. 5-2 uh, just returned, 5-1 will be ready in 20 minutes. Now I'll have both my CUVs operational for this mission. Well, then we'll talk to you later then, Chief. We'll see All you right, later. Good morning, sir. Oh, good morning, Larry. The core attack is going to begin as early as 1,500 hours. Right, sir. When I gave my platoon the warning order, I told them it could be as early as this afternoon. They just about got things ready to go now. Let's look at the map here and figure out what to show you exactly what's happening. You know, the division is located about right here, and the Corps is over in this area. You're going to be attached to the task force you normally support, Task Force 241. Now, they've been given the mission to attack along this axis right here to seize this battle position and to set up a blocking position to fix the enemy while the remainder of the Corps continues the attack in an enveloping movement here. Okay, sir, that fits with the info I had earlier. What additional equipment will I be getting for the operation? Now, I've talked to the brigade engineer about that, and seeing how important the mission that 241 has to accomplish is, you'll be getting both of the company CEVs, as well as two AVLBs. With those assets, you should be able to breach those complex obstacles the enemy's been putting in. Uh, I also intend to give you a five-ton dump to assist you with your barrier haul. You're going to need it, but I think you're going to need more, so make certain you talk to Task Force 241 and get additional assets. Now here's a list of the bearer materials that the Brigade Engineer has allocated for Task Force 241 to use. The Class 4 items are located down here in the Brigade BSA. They should be there right now. The Class 5 items are being pushed forward right now into ATP-2 about 4 kilometers from there. Now uh, looking at what you're going to have to do once you get on the battle position, I also intend to give you some dozers. Now, you're not going to need them in the initial part of the uh, operation when you're attacking, so I'll control them then and keep them right behind Task Force 241. But once you get on the battle position and you start preparing it, make certain you call back and ask for those assets. Also, make certain you coordinate with Sergeant Wright. He should be there when you give your final brief to your platoon. Finally, I have an overlay here that the Brigade Engineer gave to me. It has all the uh, obstacle areas in which you can put obstacles in. Sounds good, sir. If it's anything like our last operation, I'll definitely need the additional haul capability and mobility assets. No doubt about that. Now, the Task Force S3 and Commander are expecting you there at 0600 hours this morning. I'll head that way right after I give my platoon a warning order so they can get things moving. Now, a couple of other things. Make certain your operators do a good PMCS in your equipment. Also, that your men get good rest, and finally, that you keep me informed of the situation. I will, sir. One more thing, Larry. You get some rest also. You and your men won't be worth anything if you're too tired to operate. The mission that Task Force 241 has to accomplish is essential, so give them your best. My men can handle it. We can get the job done, sir. I'm sure you do fine, Larry. Remember, if you need anything, get in contact with me. I'll be monitoring both the company brigade command nets. I will, sir. Good luck, Larry. Thanks, sir. That's the overall situation. We support Task Force 241 as it attacks to develop a blocking position to fix the enemy. Then we provide counter-mobility support in response to enemy movements on the objective. We'll be the lead task force in the attack group. Yes, the rest of the Corps will pass us on the left and envelop the enemy as we consolidate on the objective. Okay, sir, did we get any additional equipment? We got another CEV, an AVLB, and an extra five-ton dump from the company. You can pick them up from the other platoons about 0600 hours. Good, we're going to need them just like we did the last operation. The enemy has had a good chance to dig in by now, too. We'll put them to good use. I also need a shortage list of breaching and barrier materials we have on hand here. No problem. Where do I get the extra material? From the Division ASP. Is it still located here? Right. Right now I have to head for the 241 talk. How long will it take for you to get everything ready and on the road? Well, sir, we got to get that equipment. We could be on the road in about an hour. OK. Go ahead and give the platoon a warning order and make sure they perform weapons maintenance and oil them down well. We can't afford any jams today. They're working on them now, sir. Everybody knows they're going to need them. I've got the squad leaders enforcing the sleep plan to keep the men as rested and as ready as possible. Good, and you get some rest too, Sergeant Grabenstein. I'm going to depend heavily on you again today. I need you to be ready with the platoon at all times. Yes, sir, we'll be ready. Good, you've done a great job. I'll let you know the location of the platoon assembly area as soon as I get that from the Task Force S3, Major Zimmerman. And I'll get the platoon out of here as soon as you let me know. Good luck, Sergeant Grabenstein. I'll see you at the platoon assembly area. See you later, sir. Major Zimmerman, how you doing, sir? Fine, Lieutenant Kemp. It's good to see you again. You engineers ready to go? Ready to go, sir. Outstanding. Lieutenant, it's good to see you again. You too, sir. My platoon will be supporting you again. 
I just need to find out the location of the platoon assembly area. Major Zimmerman will square you away with that. S3, make sure you bring them up on date where we are on the planning process of this problem. Yes, sir, will do. Best of luck to you, Lieutenant. Remember, remain straight and stalwart. You too, sir. Okay, Lieutenant, you can put your platoon right about in this area here. Okay, sir, I'm familiar with that area. I just need to get my platoon moving. Okay, I'll give you a briefing on the mission as soon as you do. All right, sir. Golf. 6-3 out. Santini, yes, I want you to send this message to my platoon ASAP. Also tell my platoon sergeant to meet me at the assembly not later than 11.30 hours. I got it, sir. I'll send it out right away. Thanks. I'll be with Major Zimmerman if you have any messages for me. Yes, sir. Uh, Lieutenant Gibson, I think you know Captain Trouble, our fire support officer. Great. How you doing, Lieutenant Gibson? Good, sir. How are you? Great. Tell you what, I've got three pass cam cards allocated from brigade. I need you to pre-plan targets along the axis of advance and at consolidation on the objective. As soon as I finish the overlay for the targets, I'm going to go ahead and give you the coordinate sensor. I'm going to plan three targets for every allocation. What about the use of the gator system during the attack? No. Those assets will be allocated to the division main attack. I can tell you now we'll plan fast cam along the high-speed avenues of approach and along the choke points. Right, and I need your target grids as soon as possible so that I can get them on my target list and my fire support execution matrix. I've also pre-planned targets in front of, on the enemy side of all your obstacles and minefields so that they'll be covered by indirect fire support. Yes, sir. See you later. Okay, Lieutenant Gibson, let's go over the concept of the operation real quickly here. Once the forward elements of the task force have determined the exact location of the enemy main body, believed to be somewhere in this area here, our task force, Task Force 241, acting as the lead brigade task force, will attack to fix the enemy in place near our task force objective steel. Meanwhile, the main division attack will attempt an enveloping movement around our left to envelop the same enemy forces. Now, we've got to develop a hasty defensive plan on the objective that will allow us to maneuver in response to any enemy movements against the division attack. The operation is scheduled to begin at about 1,500 hours this afternoon. Right, sir. I need to talk to the scout platoon leader in S2 and develop the priorities of intelligence requirements and provide input to the recon plan. I've got to go to the brigade op order brief. You should be prepared to brief the commander in about two hours. Yes, by then we should have enough intelligence information to construct a basic plan, sir. Actually, you bowling alley probably want to take the high ground in this area here. Um, Captain Polo, could I get some information on the enemy terrain and obstacles in our task force sector? Specifically, what are you looking for, Lieutenant? I need a location, composition, and depth of all the obstacles. Look for choke points, traffic ability levels, and possible bypasses. Remember, the AVLB needs maneuver space. Also look for any enemy engineer equipment in the area. Sounds great, Larry, but I may need some help uh, identifying and recording the information while on the move. No problem. I'll send one of my experienced NCOs to help you out with that. And if the enemy makes the mistake of leaving an obstacle unguarded, he can help you construct a quick lane through it. That'll really help. Have him meet me at checkpoint 7 in 20 minutes. I had to get back to the forward with the rest of my platoon. Captain Polo, how much time has the enemy had to prepare positions? According to the Brigade S2, the enemy has been in position for about 18 hours. The enemy is currently at about 60% strength. However, they have been reinforced with additional engineers. Thank you, sir. I'd appreciate hourly updates on the information the scout platoon compiles. Right. I'll post all the changes on the PIR chart. Hello, Larry. How's it going? Fine, sir. I'm just making our initial estimates based on the uh, intermediate staff planning. Great. I have some information I just got I want to make certain you consider in your plan. Make certain you check this area right here. From the information we received from the G2 terrain analysis team, uh, the enemy could use that area for pretty effective obstacles against our attack. Okay, sir, so I've noticed that along this ridge here, they could lay possible mines, maybe even chemical, right along their flanks. The scout section in the ground surveillance radar reporting a lot of enemy activity in that area. I agree. That's the word I've gotten also. Now, this wood head with the area here also could be a real mobility problem during the attack. Limited trails in the area may be cratered. Yes, sir. I'll call the scouts and have them go up as forward as possible to look at that area. I send Sergeant Brand with them to help them record the information. They should be sending a report back any time now. As you get more information, make certain you keep me abreast of any changes uh, so I can get more equipment to you or whatever else you need. Okay, sir. I will. Well, we'll be seeing you later then. i got to go check out 3rd platoon. Okay, sir. Take care. We should be able to get some of those initial obstacles in pretty rapidly after. Mr. Zerman, how'd the brigade briefing go, sir? Fine. 
Let me give the staff here a quick briefing on the brigade commander's intent during the initial phases of this operation. Uh, we'll be the lead task force in the attack, as you know, and the attack's scheduled to begin at about 1,500 hours. Uh, we're going to fix the enemy in place while the main corps attack uh, goes around to our uh, left in the northern sector and attempts to envelop those uh, enemy forces there. The old man and I have looked at the terrain and his guidance is for us to attack with all three teams up. Uh, his intent is to have the anti-armor company follow along on the ridge line on the right and to have the scouts uh, on the left flank here. That would be Lieutenant Swift and his platoon. Right. The scouts will screen that terrain. Now our task force objective, Objective Steel, has been broken down into three team objectives. Objective Carbon, Iron, and Zinc. Carbon in the north, Iron in the center, which is our main attack with Team Alpha, and Zinc in the southern sector. Our S2 tells me that the left team uh, will encounter some linear obstacles and probably some minefields. Yes, we also know that the enemy has placed a tank ditch and some minefields. Lieutenant Gibson, before you finalize your plan, we need to talk about some of the options we have. First of all, what equipment did you bring with you? Right now I have three eight-man squads. Each squad is mounted an M113 armored personnel carrier. I also have my own APC, as you know, so I can move around the task force area to coordinate and check on missions. Normally I only have one five-ton dump truck, but I've been given another for this operation. I'll most likely need more haul assets to move burial material and munitions for my platoon. Because of the importance of our task force mission, my commander has allocated two of our company's armored vehicle launch bridges. These AVLBs will be used both in complex obstacle breaching and as gap or stream crossing assets. We also were allocated both of the company's combat engineer vehicles. As you know, these CEVs can reduce obstacles such as bunkers and log cribs, as well as perform other mobility functions like clearing roadways and filling any tank ditches or digging survivability positions. When we get to the objective, my commander will give us three bulldozers which we can use for survivability and counter-mobility missions. Great. How do you recommend we use your assets? Well, sir, with the info I got from the S2 and the feedback from the scouts, it looks like the engineers should be employed in two different sections on the battlefield. In the northern sector, there's a stream that Team Charlie will have to cross. Later, that same team is going to have to deal with a lot of heavily wooded areas. The intelligence report that there's a lot of tree blowdown in the area, and that'll have to be cleared before they'll be able to get through these trails. What equipment do you think they'll need? First of all, in order to get through there, they'll need an AVLB to cross the stream. A CEV could clear some of the trails, and a squad equipped with chainsaws can help with the tree blowdown. How many chainsaws does a squad have? One, sir, but I can give them the other two that I have in the platoon. Okay, that sounds good. Team Alpha and Team Bravo sectors are very much alike. They're much more open with fewer natural obstacles, but they do have a lot more man-made obstacles. The S2 has reports that there are quite a few complex linear obstacles, especially in this area in the south. The center sector has complex obstacles, but they're not as in-depth. What are those complex obstacles like? They're the usual combinations of wire, any tank ditches, and minefields. Do you have the equipment you're going to need to breach them? Sir, my squads can make short work of most of the wire obstacles, and we can breach the smaller minefields with the Bangalore torpedoes. The CEV and the AVLB can take care of the anti-tank ditches, but we'll need a MICLIC with several reloads to breach the larger minefields. So in order to breach those complex obstacles, then, you're going to have to keep most of your platoon together? Yes, sir. Do you think you'll be able to get that MICLIC? I'll try through my commander and the brigade engineer, but it'd help if you'd contact the Brigade S3. Those assets are managed pretty closely. I'll do that. Now let's talk about your platoon movement. It looks like Bravo Company is going to have a lot of bypass opportunity in the south. And in the center sector with Team A, there doesn't seem to be a lot of bypass opportunity. But they do have fewer obstacles there, so we'll be able to breach them a lot more quickly. So I want you to plan on placing your assets, as you mentioned, uh, in the northern sector, Opcon to Charlie. And we'll let the rest of your platoon then travel with uh, Team Alpha. Yes, sir. Now let's talk about actions on the objective and uh, developing a blocking plan. Sir, I'll be getting my company's dozer's assets for this phase of the operation. They'll help us dig fighting positions in any tank ditches. I can dig about 40 haul defilade positions or 2,000 meters of any tank ditch in the time we have. Well, we better plan on just digging fighting positions first. Uh, when we get there and we have a chance to look at the ground, uh, the commander may change his guidance. Right, sir. I'll develop a timeline so each team will have the blade time they need to prepare their positions. They may also have the chance to dig some hide and turret defilade positions, too. What priority do you have for digging in the weapon systems? Okay, the order of priority is going to be uh, air defense systems, then we'll do the M2 Brads, then the M1 tanks, and then the improved tow vehicles. Now what about counter mobility? 
Sir, there are some obvious obstacles and key choke points, like the bridges and these roads that are cut into the hillsides. My squad will do those first. We've got enough Class 4 and 5 supplies to block most of the trails in the north with point minefields and abatis. We could also put some linear minefields in the southern sector. I can't give you the exact locations of these because we'll be putting them in the zones. And it'll depend on where the team's fighting positions are located. That way we can ensure that they're covered by fire. All right, you can designate a zone for them and uh, we'll get the exact coordinates after they're in place. Yes, sir. We'll coordinate on the ground with the team commanders. How about the flank? Uh, what are your plans for there? The train there makes it easy for me to cut it off. I should be able to do it with a couple of road craters and point minefields. Do you have enough class four and five to get that work done? And how about manpower? Sir, it's a lot more work than my platoon can do in the time available, but the brigade gave us plenty of class four and five supplies. I'll make sure the teams provide work details for you. That should help. Thanks, sir. How about a priority for the obstacle and placement? I think your recommendation to put in the choke point obstacles first is good. Uh, after those, let's do them on the flank, uh, then the linear obstacles, then we'll do the point obstacles in, the, in that heavily wooded area we talked about. Got it, sir. Is there anything else you need uh, to cover with me? Yes, sir. I have two dump trucks, but because of the distance between the BSA and the ATP in the objective area, I won't be able to move supplies up fast enough. I need additional haul assets. Who's supervising the barrier haul? My platoon sergeant, Sergeant Grabenstein. Good. The support platoon can concentrate on pushing the log pack forward. They'll be critical at that point in time. I'll see that you get two hennets. Thanks, sir. That should do it. Okay, then. Finish your estimate as soon as you can. We need to give the commander a brief in just a couple of hours. Yes, sir. I've already got a lot done on it already. Good. Let me know as soon as you're ready. I'll be working over there. All right. Hey, Lieutenant Gibson, how you doing? Good morning, sir. I'm just about ready to brief the task force commander. We can brief you both at the same time. Hey, great. It'll save us both some time. They're over at the map board. Hey, Joe. How, how you been? doing, Jack? What do you say? Hey, your battalion's doing great. Thanks, thanks. Thanks. Your guys have been doing just great support also. Okay, really great. Superb. Uh, Larry Gibson is prepared to give you his uh, estimate. What I'd like to do is uh, stand in and listen, if you don't mind. Any problem with that? No, no, not at all. Show me what you got there, Lieutenant. Okay. Right. Sir, I split my platoon into two sections for the offensive phase of the operation. In the northern sector with Team Charlie, I have Sergeant Warren. He'll have an AVLB, a CEV, and all the platoon chainsaws to deal with any tree blowdown. The S2 reports a lot of it in the sector. Good. Go on. The rest of the platoon will be with me in the central area with Team Alpha. I have two squads, a CEV, an AVLB, and the Miklik. This will allow me to breach any of the complex obstacles that we might encounter in that area. Why did you decide to put most of the assets with Team A and take away all the assets from Team B? It appears like to me that Team B will run into some obstacles too and will need engineer support. The S3 made that decision, sir. The only problem I have is Miklik reloads. With what I have in the platoon, I can only breach from one minefield. I've asked for four reloads, but no word has come down yet, sir. Well, I know there are plenty of reloads left in the division. I'll talk to the XO and make sure that the S4 is, is read into the situation and is working on the problem. Can I help you with anything else? That just about covers the first phase of the operation. What about fast camp? I've already planned for that, sir, but since it's the same for both phases of the operation, I'm going to brief it with the second phase. Okay, how about gems? I do not have the company's gems, sir. I know it's not being used, so request it. You can man it by shifting a few people around. These open areas further up in the northern sector, just east of the ridge line here, would be ideal for its use. All right, sir. Make sure you get your plan up to the brigade engineer as soon as possible so he can get you permission to lay those minefields. Yes, sir. As part of the second phase of the operation, the delayed priority will go to survivability while the personnel will go to counter-mobility. For survivability, I have the company's dozers waiting and ready to pull up on order. They work together under an NCO. I developed a timeline for the dozers to work starting with Charlie in the north, then moving to the anti-armor company, then Team Alpha, and finally Team Bravo. In the amount of time we've got, I'll be able to give you at least primary positions. If we have more time, I'll be able to improve those positions or dig you any tank ditches as per your guidance. That's good. We'll see what we find when we get on the ground at the objective. OK, sir. Once we're on the objective and the teams release the squads, we'll begin work on the obvious obstacles. Once we're finished in these areas, we'll move up to these zones that fit with the zones that are established by brigade in this area. 
The exact locations depend on where the teens put their fighting positions. I won't move outside the zone so you'll be able to move, move your forces laterally. Each area has a letter that will designate its priority. If time permits, we'll go ahead and increase the depth of the obstacles. The only problem we have is that it might block your movement, and so we're going to have to reserve the execution. What level would you like the execution reserved to, sir? Plan on the teams executing them. You will give them the target folders. Yes, sir. The folder will have the information they need to blow the obstacle. It'll show how it's put together, armed, and it'll show them how to change the state of readiness. The only thing that'll be left blank will be the order to the demolition firing party. The team commanders will have to fill this out themselves. Sir, finally, I want to show the short duration fast camp. These targets are along the northern flank, and they'll help us if the enemy tries to envelop us from that direction. I also have fast camp planned as part of the defense. Several are planned where I want to have continuous obstacles and might not have time to finish those up. I have others in these areas along here. Okay, but I want you to add a couple more areas here and here and keep the other areas you've already previously planned. Okay, sir. I'll get those to the FSO so he can template them for your decision points. Sounds good. I do have the authority to execute those on my own. Yes, sir. That's what Captain Preble says. Okay, Lieutenant. You've done an excellent job. Things may change, though, when we're out looking at uh, the ground during our recon. In fact, I want you to accompany me on the recon. All right, sir. We'll see you at the final brief, then. I'll be ready, sir. Okay, great. See you on the battlefield, Jack. Okay, Joe. i got to hit the road for recon. Kill him. Okay. A good brief, Lieutenant Gibson. Uh, you've got good, solid control. Make sure you take care of your men now, all right? All right, sir. I'll head that way as soon as I'm finished here. Okay, good luck. I'll be back as soon as I can. All right, sir. See you then. Well, this is it. We're almost ready for another operation. I sure hope I've thought of everything. How's it going, Lieutenant? Fine, sir. We just finished breaching that complex obstacle over there. Outstanding. Why don't you give me a briefing on exactly how you breached that? Well, sir, I received a briefing from Captain Becker, the Alpha Team Commander, on our support for the breaching operation. First platoon has spotted an obstacle to our front. It extends from the edge of the mountain to the edge of the pond. They don't see any mines. All they see is wire obstacle and tank ditch about 25 meters further. The task force commander wants to breach it at the southern end of the obstacle, sir. There's a lot more high positions in that tree line. Sounds good. My wingmen right now can't find a bypass. I'll reposition the vehicles to support the breach. The ground is low in that area, which should keep you from direct fire of the enemy. Right, sir. Go ahead and dismount your troops, and once they get in position, we'll have them secure the obstacle. Our rehearsal should really pay off now. All right, I'll continue the high volume of fire. The Fitz is laying those guns right on. He'll switch to mortar smoke as the dismounts move toward the obstacle and continue through the breach. Check with me before you move out, and I'll shift fires. Yes, sir, I could also use some smoke generators on those tanks. You've got it. As soon as the dismounts are on the obstacle, I'll have the M1s make a couple runs. Good luck. After I rehearsed my platoon for the breaching mission, we approached the obstacle with three M113s carrying my squads. The AVLB and the CV were right behind us. The enemy side of the obstacle had been obscured with smoke. One of my squads and an APC went forward as far as the wire fence in front of the anti-tank ditch. The squad put out security and two teams removed the partially assembled Bangalore torpedoes from the track. These teams carried the Bangalores up to the fence where they pushed them under the wire about three meters apart. They completed assembly of the sections as the torpedoes were slid right up to the edge of the anti-tank ditch. Anglers were primed with a one minute time fuse and the squad got back in the track and moved out to a safe distance. A 
A squad returned to the explosion site in his APC right after the blast. Again, security was posted as two men with mine detectors proofed the path that the Bangalore explosion had created. They returned down the center of the path to complete the search for any tank mines. Other squad members marked the cleared and proofed path so that our vehicles could cross safely. That squad then moved out. The AVLB approached the breach in the wire. The bridge was launched that it covered the path between the wire obstacle and the anti-tank ditch, as well as the ditch itself. The operator then rammed the tip of the bridge into the dirt embankment on the far side and released the bridge, making way for the CEV. The CEV came up to the bridge quickly and crossed over. lowered his blade when he got into the dirt embankment and pushed through, crossing to the other side. He generated more screening smoke for the vehicles to follow. The maneuver unit team vehicles, M2 Bradley fighting vehicles, and the M1 tanks then crossed the bridge over the complex obstacle. As soon as the company team vehicles had all passed through the breach, the remainder of my vehicles will cross over the obstacle to join the team as it continues the attack towards the objective. Great. Are your men putting that uh, GEMS minefield on the flank? Yes, sir. The GEMS is over there placing in that minefield. Down to three reloads for the Miklik, and I lost a dump truck in the minefield near that anti tank ditch. How about personnel? I lost the driver of the dump truck and had four other personnel slightly wounded. They had to be evacuated, though. I can't expect any replacement for at least 24 hours. Sir, I have a message for you. Okay, thanks. It says that A and B teams have reached their objectives. Great, my platoon will start in the obstacle plan right away. We'll continue to work based on the original op order. Right, you can go with the commander and me on that recon. That way we can make any changes required to the uh, engineer plan. Right, sir, I'm ready when you are. Good, I'll talk to the commander and get his guidance on the placement of all those obstacles, particularly in the zones we talked about. That's the area over there where they'll most likely make their major push as a result of the division main attack. Yes, sir. I'll bring the barrier materials up through here. I'll get my platoon working on it right away. Good. I think we've seen enough here. Let's get back so we can get with the S3 and revise the op order. So, Steve, I want you to modify our original consolidation plan based on our recon. My intent is to place the task force battle positions in these areas. That will enable us to block the enemy advance against the, the division main attack in this sector here. All right, sir. I'll get those fragos out immediately. Good. Let me see it before you get them out. Yes, sir. Lieutenant, what'd you find out on your recon about obstacle placement in this area here? Well, sir, this ridge line here is a natural defensive line that runs along the entire sector. With the commander's guidance on the type and location of task force battle positions in these areas here and here, I'll be able to enhance those positions. I couldn't place obstacles like road craters and any tank ditch it will block any enemy advance against the main attack. It should take about eight to ten hours to complete. What did you find out in these areas about obstacle placement here and here? Well, sir, we could put a road crater here, right about here, and lay some minefield through the valley here. Good, that ought to close up those areas. The commander wanted those areas sealed up until the core attack was finished. How about these subsequent battle positions further back? Okay, that should do it for the revisions to the op plan. Okay, make sure you let me know of any changes in the fast cam plans. That way I can change the target list. 
I will. It may be necessary to change him, though, if the enemy push comes from the south instead of the north. Okay. We'll catch you later. I'll get Colonel Hughes over here, and we'll brief him on the revisions to the op plan. Colonel Hughes, could you join us for a quick brief? Sir, I've got three teams in these battle positions, 72, 82, and 92. Uh, teams C, A, and B. I've got the anti-armor on the right-hand flank here that will be over watching our flank. Uh, from these battle positions, they can fire into these engagement areas and they can also be supported by these zones of obstacles here, here, and here. Good, that's exactly what I wanted. That forces the enemy to use these avenues of approach. Lieutenant, that's the area we talked about on a recon. Those obstacles are crucial. Yes, sir, those obstacles should effectively block the enemy and hold them in the engagement areas as long as possible. Great, that takes care of our primary positions. What about our next set of battle positions? Sir, for our next set of battle positions, We'll have uh, Charlie team move from these battle positions back to here. We have Alpha team move from these positions back to these positions. And we'll have uh, Bravo team move from this position back into here. Uh, we'll have the anti-armor stay put here. That way they can get some long-range flank shots into this area. Uh, we'll also be able to use these engagement areas here, supported by these obstacle zones uh, here. So these obstacles in the north serve to break off disengagement in this area. We've also cut the enemy high-speed avenues approach in this area. Excellent. That area could cause us a great deal of concern, especially if the enemy made a concentrated attack through there. Now, if the enemy attacks from here, we'll be able to use these battle positions back in here. There are additional obstacles that help cut these high-speed avenues of approach. We've kept the anti-armor for the most part in this sector here. Uh, the terrain is wide open through most of this area, and that way they can get some good long-range flank shots. Okay, gentlemen. Looks good. Put it in the op order and let's get it out as soon as possible. Yes, sir. we Will do. Well, it looks like we're ready to complete the defensive portion of this operation. It's hard to believe all the coordination and planning that goes into it and the operation order briefing that started the whole operation. So control of those assets are going to fall to your team commanders as soon as the attack starts. All right. Uh, I'll introduce Lieutenant Gibson now. He's going to give you the engineer portion of the op order brief. Lieutenant Gibson? Thank you, sir. Does everyone have copies of the obstacles on your overlays? Do you also have a target list and a copy of the engineer annex? Priorities for engineer support during this phase of the operation would be mobility, countermobility, and survivability. The task organization for the engineers during this phase has it split into two sections. Under Team Charlie in the north will be a squad with an AVLB, one CEV, and all three of the platoon's chainsaws. In addition, I'll send a cargo truck pulling the gems. It'll move into Team Charlie's se sector for flank mining operations. The minefields that have already been approved are numbered 2022, 23, and 24. They can be executed by order of the task force commander. The NCO with the gems is already aware of the locations of these minefields. The remainder of the engineer platoon assets will be under my control with Team Alpha. That includes my track, two squads, an AVLB, a CEV, and the towed Miklik. These assets can breach any of the complex obstacles that have been identified by the S2 as being in this sector. Once we're on the objective, the priority for the squads will be survivability, countermobility, then mobility. All the blade assets will be controlled by my heavy equipment NCO, Sergeant Wright. I developed a timeline to help control these assets. Basically, each team will have the blades for three and a half hours. They'll start in Team's Charlie sector, and then to the anti-armor company, Team Alpha, and finally the Team Bravo. You should link up with the equipment NCO at the coordinates that are listed in the engineer annex. The priority for survivability by system will be air defense, M2s, M1s, and finally the improved tow vehicles. It's important that each company tell Sergeant Wright where they want the positions dug. A liaison should be waiting so he can get to work right away. If time permits, we may be able to get the blades back into your sectors to dig more positions or even put in any tank ditches. The target list identify the priorities of all the targets. My squads will begin work immediately after the release from your teams. The work on the most obvious obstacles. I've numbered those 2001 to 6. You should ensure that those are covered by fire. The rest of the obstacles will be in the designated zones on your overlays. These obstacles can be moved around inside those zones to maximize the effectiveness of your fire, as long as they stay in those areas, which is very important. The squads we working there have been briefed to coordinate with you or your XO. The order of work is also on the target list. 
If you could provide work details to help us out, we'd get a lot more work accomplished. We, uh, we can also give you advice on how to use your basic loads and ferry materials. Some of the targets on the target list are reserved, and they'll be turned over to your squads for execution. My squads will provide the target folders, which give you the information you'll need to execute all of those targets. It'll also give you instructions on how to change the state of readiness. If the execution is reserved to the company, I highly recommend using the orders to the demolition firing party to help control that, that target. Finally, short duration fast cam has been planned for the flanks. This is part of the obstacle areas. The exact locations are on your target list again. The execution has been reserved to the task force commander. Gentlemen, this concludes my briefing. Are there any questions? Lieutenant Gibson, I have a question concerning when and where to link up with my team for the uh, operations order. Basic Task Force 241 Scheme Maneuver. The priority of support during the attack phase of the operation will be mobility, then counter-mobility, then survivability. Sergeant Warren, your squad with one AVLB, a CEV, an M548 tow in the gen to support Team Charlie in the northern sector. You will have all three of the platoon's chainsaws to clear any tree blowdown or possibly an abatee. The AVLB will be used to cross the stream just forward of the FIBA. Yes, sir. Where's the priority area of the mining operations? Three possible minefields have already been approved on your overlays. 2022, 23, and 24, they're all located on your right flank, Sergeant Warren. There are also artillery fast cam targets designated by three-digit target numbers on your overlays. You have to maintain contact with me throughout the whole operation so we'll be able to coordinate these assets. I'll get with Charlie Team Commander ASAP. Under my control in the central area will be two squads, an AVLB, a CEV, and the Miklik. We'll be supporting Team Alpha. Reconnaissance reports indicate there are a fair number of complex linear obstacles in the area, so be ready to breach under fire. What about the southern sector, sir? The task force commander is counting on Team Bravo being able to bypass all those obstacles in that area. On the objective, Sergeant Warren, you'll be released from Team Charlie. We'll consolidate behind Team Alpha. The effort for the squads will be counter mobility, survivability, and then mobility on the objective. You all have copies of the initial target list and overlays of phase two of the operation. Be sure to coordinate with the team commanders to find out where they want the obstacles. They may move those obstacles around to maximize the effectiveness of their fires. At this time, Sergeant Grabenstein, you should initiate the barrier hall. What if they want to move the obstacle out of the area or even change the type of obstacle? As long as you inform me so I can coordinate that with the task force talk and brigade, it's okay. When do we pick up munition and barrier materials? Well, I've established three breakdown points near the platoon assembly area. Each obstacle will have a specific point. That should help us save a little bit of time. Remember, point two is for joint obstacles. We've got two five-ton dumps from the company and two six-by-sixes from the task force on the road right now picking up class four and five. We'll be able to push forward mines for the large linear minefields, but this won't be accomplished until after the haul is completed. It shouldn't take long. The, the trucks will be located in the combat trains at the beginning of the operation. Okay, first squad, you're going to have obstacle area Echo. Second squad, you'll have obstacle area Fox. And third squad, you'll have obstacle area Golf. Remember to stick by the priority list on the target list. What about the reserve targets, sir? Turn of the reserve targets is noted on the target list. Be sure to go over the target folder with the maneuver unit. And I can't emphasize security enough. Make sure the maneuver unit is between the enemy and your job site. Where do you want my bulldozers at, sir? I'll pick you up at the platoon assembly area where we'll move to Team Charlie's positions. The effort for the heavy equipment section will be survivability, counter mobility, and then finally mobility. After we're finished with Team Charlie's positions, we'll move to the anti-armor team, then to Team Alpha, to Team Bravo, and finally to the mortar section. How long do I work with each team? About three and a half hours. And the priority for the systems, the weapon systems, will be air defense, the M2s, the M1s, the improved tow vehicles, and the 113s. Do you have any refuel capability on site? Sir, Captain Stein dedicated one fuel truck to be attached to us for the operation. Great. Remember to make face-to-face -face coordination with each of the team commanders and keep me posted hourly on your progress. What kind of position do you want? Well, I'll go with hall defilade first. And then if you have time, go back and improve the positions of turret defilade. 
Sergeant Malloy, once the objective is taken, move the AVLBs to the platoon assembly area. The CEVs are going to stay with Sergeant Wright to improve their survivability positions. They're going to remain attached to the platoon throughout the operation. Sir, where do you want my equipment once the enemy starts the attack? After the attack starts, the AVLBs will move to the task force combat trains. The CEVs will remain with us to construct alternate and supplementary positions. Keep the AVLBs on the radio and on alert in case we have a flex attack. No problem, sir. The line squads, I want you to continue placing obstacles in depth as noted on your target list. Be sure to work from the enemy side to the rear. Barrier hall to the second breakdown point will be on my order, and that's all noted on your overlays. And be sure as you're working farther back not to cut off the main supply route for the battalion, and keep me posted on your progress. Sir, do you want any special reports? No, just the standard reports. Initiation, completion, and turnover. And make sure you assist as much as you can on any maneuver unit and placed obstacles, and also report them. When you get to the objective, expect changes, but keep moving with your original plans. I'll update you with Fragos as the operation... Sergeant Wright, this is the last position you got at Dig here in Team Charlie? Yes, sir, it is. All right, after you finish, go ahead and load up and take it down to the anti armor team. No problem, sir. How's it going, Sergeant Brand? Fine, sir. We're just about finished. Good. Looks great. What about the other initial obstacles in your sector? Sir, we've only got one more obstacle here in Area C. As soon as we finish with this minefield, we'll move down about 300 meters and put in a road trader. Once we're done there, we'll move on to Area Echo. Okay, you'll receive frag orders to initiate additional obstacles as the tactical situation develops. Yes, sir. We've got with the team commanders, and he's informed us that we may be able to put in linear obstacles from the target list near his battle position. Prime the charges, and let's get out of here. Are you ready for me to hook up the fuse igniter? Hook it up and blow it. How's it going, Sergeant Laney? Fine, sir. I've completed all my obstacles except for this bridge and a minefield for Team Alpha. About how long will it take you to finish up here? Approximately 20 more minutes, sir. What about turnover? I've already coordinated with the team, and they should be here in 30 minutes to turn it over. Great. Here's an amended target list. All right, sir. After you're finished with Team Alpha's minefield, I want you to go here and put in a road crater. All right, sir. I'll head that way as soon as I can after I turn the target over to the maneuver unit. According to my timeline estimates and current information from the covering force scouts, the attack should take place in about two hours. It appears their main axis of attack is oriented toward Team C. Lieutenant Gibson, can you reinforce obstacles in that area? Yes, sir. I already have the barrier materials and I have the obstacles planned for them. Good. Colonel Hughes wanted to make sure that we were able to block any enemy advances against the division envelopment until it was completed. I'm going to be forced to pull up my heavy equipment assets soon, sir. However, my squads can continue to work until the enemy closes in. I'll keep you informed of any major events. I'll call my squads immediately, and they can begin work in that sector. One more thing, Lieutenant. Once you pull your squads back and consolidate, Brigade has directed us to release you to your organic company. I'll brief the commander on the changes. Yeah. He'll be glad to know your men were able to get all those obstacles in. This operation has been successful. However, for the task force engineer, the job is never completed. He must plan the integration of engineer assets with the maneuver units well in advance, while efficiently executing and amending the existing plans. When properly employed, engineer forces are a powerful combat multiplier. Managing these valuable assets is the job of the task force engineer.